I'm joined now by Neil Chatterjee. Uh, he's a FERC commissioner, and FERC is basically the, the organization you go to in the government that's going to help you build that natural gas pipeline interstate uh, to get the natural gas from the Permian all the way to the Gulf Coast. Great to see you, Neil. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I want to start uh, with what the IEA said today. They said that the U.S. could become the biggest natural gas producer in the world, uh, beating Qatar and Australia, if all the projects that are online do come online. We need pipelines to do that. Can we get it done? We can. Uh, you know, at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we're, uh, uh, you know, the federal regulator who oversees the uh, permitting of our pipeline infrastructure, and uh, we're currently undergoing a review of our 1999 certificate policy statement on pipelines. It's been uh, almost 20 years. Um, I think there's a lot that works with our existing uh, program, but there's always ways that we can do things better, and I think my colleagues and I are working together to find just that way. Well, what are you hearing are some of the other issues, like staff? Is that causing delays? Uh, contractors? So the reviewing of all any kind of projects. What, what are you hearing as the other issues? So, uh, look, these are very complex projects. Um, they're challenged in the courts. They're, uh, uh, you know, uh, objections at the local levels. But at the end of the day, our process, you know, if you have a lawfully submitted application, our process isn't easy. It's not inexpensive. Uh, but you can have confidence at the end of our process uh, that, that uh, your, your, your uh, project will get permitted. Um, what we need to work on is uh, is getting it done more efficiently, more mm -hmm. effectively. The timelines are taking way too long. We can do it better, but we can do it better without uh, sacrificing environmental considerations or uh, public safety. So I was talking to uh, some ex-first commissioners, and they said that now it probably takes two to three years to get a pipeline from when you get it through your company to getting uh, to getting it in the ground to getting actual natural gas flowing. What do you hope to get that to? So I don't want to you know set a timeline for it. And I will also say that I think uh, historically. FERC has been a good actor in this space. I don't think the agency is the reason for some of these delays. But we can look in our own processes and find ways to do things better. We also need to better coordinate with the other federal agencies that uh, have a role in uh, the permitting process. Um, and we continue to face challenges at the state level where there is resistance to getting some of this infrastructure built. Yeah, let's talk about that because uh, it happened last week. EQT pipeline, it needed to cross some waterways. And actually, uh, the Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit District uh, Actually, first, fourth district court actually wound up uh, saying there should be a stay due to environmental groups. Does a FERC permit process mean anything when the states can block you? It's uh, it's certainly uh, been one of the challenges that we're having to contend with. Uh, I respect uh, states' rights. Uh, I respect uh, uh, local uh, governments taking action. Uh, that said, you know, when you have an interstate pipeline system that's necessary for energy security, for national security, um, I think it's important that we get these projects built. And uh, unfortunately, it may take further uh, court action. Uh, to get us to the point where we need to be. Well, let's talk about national security uh, and pipelines. Uh, what do you see as a security risk? in natural, pipe, natural gas pipelines? Well, uh, uh, I want to cite a column that a colleague of mine, Commissioner Rich Glick, and I authored uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, focusing on our increased dependence on gas in the power sector. 20 years ago, if a gas pipeline went out, um, I think a generator wouldn't even flinch at it. Today, when you might have eight, nine generators you know, dependent on a single pipeline, an outage from a physical attack or a cyber attack could have you know, real security threat. And Can't you make that argument, though, with anything, a nuclear plant, uh, a, a storage facility. What we have to be vigilant in security across the board. The challenge that my colleague and I have uh, cited is that uh, the authority to uh, to oversee the security of these pipelines rests with the Transportation Security Administration. TSA does a wonderful job in their areas of expertise, aviation, highway safety, rail safety. Uh, they confirmed as of last year they only have six people overseeing the security of our robust network of pipelines. And we just feel that a more sector-specific agency, perhaps DOE, might be a better place uh, for this important level. Security. Well, and I ask because part of the reason why we're seeing President Trump and the White House really try to subsidize coal and uh, nuclear energy in the Northeast is part of a grid reliability issue. And that if you have an outage, you need coal and nuclear. Therefore, you need the uh, the, the power companies to basically buy the power from uh, uh, coal and nuclear plants. You guys did not approve that when it came to you. If the DOE does come up with some kind of plan. Will the actual payments come down to you? It has to flow from somewhere to get, say, get from PJM to the coal plant. Is that you guys? So we didn't approve the original uh, notice of proposed rulemaking for the Department of Energy because uh, we're an evidentiary-based body. And what we found was the record did not support compensating plants for having on-site fuel. It is unclear to me what steps DOE may take going forward. There's been talk of using Section 202C. Mm -hmm. There's been talk of the Defense Production Act or some combination thereof. Uh, 202 
DOC is a more uh, well-known path. Uh, theoretically, if uh, DOE D DOE did determine that there were a fuel security emergency um, and a uh, generator were to end into, into a contract with an ISO or RTO and they couldn't come to terms on price, yeah. they would come to the commission and that is where, you know, that's our, as the chairman has said, that's our but bread and butter. Uh, we have ways of, uh, of you know, uh, formulaic ways of, uh, of calculating that but, cost. But would you set rates at anything other than the market rate? So we, we have a formula in which uh, uh, that's what we do um, and uh, we would apply that formula and uh, if uh, DOE has determined that a contract is necessary between a generator and uh, uh, an RTO or the ISO, you know, we have set ways that we look at uh, the, at costs, at capital, mm -hmm. um, and, and a margin for profit, and we would apply that formula in a legal way. 